Belwarda is a large theme park and wildlife park located on the northwestern side of Belgium outside of the town of Ypres. They opened their doors back in 1954, originally as just a garden and bird park, built right next to a large battle site from World War I known as the Battle of Bellwater. The park wouldn't start adding rides till 1978, eventually joining the Walby Group in 1992, and then in 1998 they were bought out by Premier Parks, which also owns Six Flags. They operated the park for several years under the same name, so they never adopted the Six Flags branding, until eventually in 2004 Six Flags sold off their European properties. Now the park is owned by a European-based group that also operates Park at Streaks, and once again, the other Walby Parks. So they've certainly gone through a lot of changes through the years. They currently own 134 acres of land, housing just under 40 different rides. That includes five roller coasters, or six roller coasters if you count both sides of Dawson Duel. When I went, they had one less roller coaster, because since my first visit, they've added a new kids coaster, and an entire themed land called Mundo Amazonia. The headlining attraction there is an Intamin raft ride called Amazonia. I'll talk about that a little later. They may not house some of the big, towering thrill rides that you'll find at other Belgium themed parks such as Bobby Onland, Walby Belgium, or the nearby Plopsaland de Pan. This is definitely more of a family park, but they still have some pretty interesting attractions. I only recently visited for my first time. Actually, on my first visit to Belgium, I skipped Belwarda because I was like, well, if I have to prioritize, the other parks look more interesting. And after going back and visiting Belwarda, I couldn't believe that I skipped it the first time around. This place was really, really cool. Overall, it exceeded my expectations. First off, the place is huge. It has this incredibly long and narrow layout with these huge towering trees. So what happens is you can't really see any of the attractions until you get there. So you're just walking along these nice wide pathways, not knowing what is coming next. And if you're someone like me who didn't do a ton of research going in, I was just wandering around and had no idea where anything was. We came in through entrance C. Bellwarda has more than one entrance. A lot of people will come in through entrance A. Where we came in from is the Mexico section of the park, which technically could be seen as the back of the park. But I know that they like to use this entrance because of the size of the parking lot out front. So like right when we walked in, you had the boomerang, the the Topple Tower, Huracan, and then we'd walk all the way to the back and that's where you'd have Wakala, Dawson Duel, and that whole Canadian section. And I'll say right away, you know, they only have a couple roller coasters, but for the most part, the attractions that they have are good. I ended up wanting more than one ride on a lot of them, and there were some really nice hidden gem attractions that you might overlook at first. Like in our original plans, we were thinking, you know, Bellwater could be a half-day park. I don't know how much time we're going to need here. Even with the crappy weather, as you can see by this footage and the short lines that we got, we spent most of the day here just because of how huge the park is. Especially if you're an animal lover, there is so much to see. They have lions, zebras, giraffes, lemurs, capybaras, monkeys, all sorts of stuff. And what I like that they've done here is integrate those wildlife habitats in with the rides. So like I think about Flamingo Land, how they have a ride section and then an animal section. If you only cared about the animals, you don't have to go anywhere near the rides or vice versa. Here, it goes back and forth. So while you're walking towards an attraction, you might stop to look at some zebras. And I think that's why this park is so huge, because some of these exhibits are very large and impressive. My personal favorite was the lemur exhibit. This was unlike anything I've ever seen at any other zoo I've been to. You can walk into this massive habitat and get right up close and personal with these lemurs. They'll be climbing on the ropes, sitting on a bench. You're not supposed to touch them or feed them, but if the lemurs like hop on your lap or start sniffing you, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. You just let it happen. It was really, really cool. That was honestly one of the biggest highlights for me. Definitely don't miss that. Well, let's walk through some of these individual areas. So I'll start with where we initially came in from, and that's Mexico. And this is actually a great first impression, although a little deceiving, because while the architecture was very pretty and there were lots of rides in this immediate area, it made us think that the whole park was gonna be like that. But in actuality, most of the park looks like this. Just long winding pathways with huge trees and maybe every once in a while a ride pops up. There's really only two heavily themed sections in the park, the other one being the Canadian Frontier, which I mentioned is all the way in the back. Although new for 2024 is Mundo Amazonia, located directly next to Mexico, that's home to their new Rapids ride. We got to see some of the construction for it while we were there, and now that it is built, you can just see how it has completely changed the feel of this area. 
It is a very visually impressive attraction, and it's the only one of its kind, so obviously there's a lot of intrigue of what is this gonna feel like. No other rapids on the planet comes close to doing what this does. So that's a great excuse to revisit Bellwater at some point, although it does have me wondering what they're gonna do with their other rapids, because yes, this is the park's second rapids ride. A bit of an odd choice, but anyways, getting back to Mexico, the first ride that we saw was their Vacoma Boomerang. This was the first boomerang to ever open to the public. And so as you can imagine, it's one of the jankier ones. The brakes are very reactive, to say the least. They stop you abruptly. It is not gradual at all. The Cobra roll is also not smooth. So if you're someone that counts coaster credits, you ride it for the credit. If you don't care about that sort of thing, this is one to skip. Ironically, though, it is right next to what we consider to be the best ride of the park. It is called Huracan. It is an indoor-outdoor family coaster by Zero. Huracan is this Mayan god, so you have this really cool temple-like theming, this beautiful station, and an incredible dark ride section leading up to the lift hill. The ride vehicle is onboard audio, and it is such a vibe. And I say it's indoor-outdoor, but really, it's mostly an indoor coaster. They just have one brief outdoor section. That's what you see right here. Everything else is enclosed. And it's actually a pretty good layout. There's lots of banked turns, some fun special effects with a rainbow wall. There's lots of lasers. There's this really cool tunneling effect. This is one to do multiple times, especially because the first time you ride it, it's possible you might not get all the effects and you just don't know it until you go again. We did it maybe three times, and I liked it way more the second time because I realized that the first time, some of the effects weren't on. I was like, whoa, now there's fog, and the audio is working. So for some of our friends, they only wrote it once, and the audio wasn't on at all, so they had no idea that onboard audio. But when everything's working, it is amazing. It replaced this old Pirates-themed boat ride. I never got to do that attraction, but I really, really like what Bellwarda did here. That's an underrated ride. Now, right next door to Huracan is the ride that made us want to visit this park. Bellwarda is home to the only operating topple tower from Huss. It is called El Volador, and it is a super weird ride. Very bizarre to experience. I would say it is more enjoyable to watch than it is to ride. Because what happens is, after you start tilting, you just kind of hang there facing the ground or on your back, and it doesn't actually lean over as much as it looks like from the ground. Like, when you're just watching this thing go, it's a total spectacle. I loved it for the unique factor. But after my ride, I was like, you know, that was okay. I don't think I need to go again. But be careful if you go out there to ride this, because it is the only one out there, it is also very temperamental. We saw it break down multiple times while at the park. So if it's open, get in line. Before we leave Mexico, I will also shout out the food of this section. There's a sit-down restaurant called Texas Grill. That's one of the more expensive, like, nicer places in the park to eat. We opted for this quick service stand over by the Boomerang, and the food here is definitely on the expensive side. We paid 16 euros for a burger combo. The burger was good. The fries were bad. And they gave us a zebra cake with it, which was literally disgusting. Don't eat it. Not anything to shout at. I don't know if the other food in the park is better because this was the only meal I had, but it was not a great impression. I will say that. Now, as we leave Mexico, we'll begin our trek through the woods. As I mentioned earlier, this is where you're going to be passing the new Intamin raft ride. On the other side is the park's log flume. It's called River Splash. It goes through the woods. One of the many water-based attractions here, because we have a log flume, the new rapids, the old rapids. There's a shoot the shoots in the back of the park in Canada. And there's this Jungle Cruise knockoff. This is just a little bit further down the pathway. It's called Jungle Mission. We didn't know what this was at all. So we're like, what the heck? We got in line. It took us past several different animal exhibits, including flamingos, capybaras. And then we started getting into the more thematic side of things where we saw some tiki huts, went through a tunnel, saw lots of statues depicting some locals. You can definitely tell where they got their inspiration from, but of course there was not a guide for this. The vehicle was just pulled by this tug through the water. Nice long ride, definitely glad we did it. As you continue along, this is where a lot of the other animal exhibits will start popping up. You will also walk past a Vacoma Madhouse. This is called Houdini's Magical House, which I think it's hilarious that there's another Vacoma Madhouse themed to Houdini, because at least I'm familiar with the one at Six Flags Great Adventure, and there's also one at Six Flags New England called Houdini's Great Escape. So this was a madhouse that we did not do, but really nice to know that it's there. Coming up is this really impressive playground that looks like the Taj Mahal. You also see a Zamperla Nebulas. That's one of the newer attractions in the park. And then here we have Bengal Express. This is a train that goes through a large section of the park, including, as you might guess, the Tiger Exhibit, hence the name. 
Another creative way of seeing some of the animals. I love how scenic this place is. It really reminded me of Efteling, just the sheer amount of trees here, how scattered about the attractions are. The longer you walk, the more you'll discover. I really liked how on the far side, the pathway opened up onto this boardwalk section that goes out over this huge lake. Some really nice views, and that's when you get to Wakala. This is the Gersauer Family Coaster. Really impressive ride with some cool tricks, including a spike with a backward section. Creative layout, also interacting with the park's alpine coasters, which, yes, Bellwarda has an alpine coaster. Not just one, but two. It is a racing set built up on supports. It does not use the terrain. This is not a terrain park at all. It is on almost completely flat ground. So why they decided to build alpine coasters here is a very, very strange choice, especially considering they bypass the lift hill aspect, so you board at the top. Well, the top of what? The top is this huge access ramp that just keeps on going. You have to walk and walk and walk all the way up to the top where you board the station. And it takes a while. And because it's one person per vehicle, maybe two if you're riding with a kid, this line doesn't move. When you come here to Bellward, if you want to ride this, do it first thing in the morning right when the ride opens. At least during our visit, only one side was open. So that's half capacity and the ride overall just wasn't that impressive. I know Alpine coasters can sometimes be annoying because of how much they'll cost, and it was nice to do one that was like included with your admission, but the reality is those ones that cost money ended up being like way better rides than this, so I'd rather do those instead. But finally, that brings us into the Canadian frontier. This is home to the Niagara Shoot the Shoots I talked about where you can ride down this double down. Very popular attraction. There's also this Huss shot tower called Screaming Eagle, probably the tallest ride in the park. There's a set of slides that you can ride down. Those are always a good time, giving you some nice air. And then a couple kids attractions, and that gives you your idea of Bellwarda. Outside of the theme park, they do have an indoor water park next door called Bellwarda Aqua Park. This was something that we did not visit, but it's nice that they've turned this place into like a real destination. I think it's a perfect place for families. It's a great way to see some animals, ride some rides. Your feet will be tired by the end of the day. There's so much walking. If you want to go from the front of the park to the back, it is a hike. But it really was worth it. I look forward to visiting again one day. I would love to see them invest next in like a larger thrill coaster. Because right now their biggest like thrill ride is a Vacoma Boomerang from 1984. I know they definitely cater more to a younger audience, but there are absolutely some other rides that they could go with. They would still have a low height requirement that would enhance their roller coaster collection. I hope that's something they consider in the future, especially since those other Belgian parks are getting a lot better. They've seen some big, serious investment, and Bellward is definitely making a statement with their new Rapids ride, but I'd love to see them focus on a new, larger roller coaster next. And I know they have the land for it. So let me know down in the comments below if you visited Bellwarda in Belgium, if you agree with the points that I brought up, if you think there's anything I missed, and of course, stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.